So we are live. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the wrestling show that's not just for wrestling fans. This is Smart and Friends on lovewrestling.ca. Pardon me, that first sip just went down the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Great start. <laughs> it is a tasty beer. This is the get with the green that's brewed by uh, your your fellow wrestler, Green Phantom. Uh, but yes. My name is Zach, and I'll be your host. Uh, so thanks for tuning in to the special live version of the show. I'm just getting into frame again. This is like the nature of live television, and I'm not so used to it. Uh, we're recording live from Brutopia here in Montreal, and I'm, I'm very privileged to be joined by the cast and crew of Out in the Ring, the, uh, the LGBTQ documentary exploring the LGBTQ community in the pro wrestling scene. I am joined by Mike Barrow, the one-man demolition machine. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> I thought you were going to go around and interview. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I, was I, 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 was, I was being polite. <laughs> <laughs> I am joined by the real mean girl of pro wrestling, Danny Jordan. That's me. Thank you. And the concrete rose, Sunny, uh, Sunny Kiss. That's right. And of course, the director of the film, who has joined me on Smart and Friends, he's been a part of a lot of love wrestling programming, Rye Levy. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's good to finally meet in person. I know. I was just saying this. It's like an absolute privilege to be sitting with everyone. But you, like, you've been such a part of love wrestling uh, content for a better part of the last year now. And it's great to finally have you in person. Likewise, it's great to finally connect. Yeah, absolutely. How has Montreal been treating you uh, this go? Great. Well, whoever wants it's to so jump It's so cute in. here. I love it. love it. So this is Danny's first time in Montreal. Yeah. Okay. And Paro and I have been here before. Okay. And I uh, I was lucky enough to come a little bit early and I brought my husband who just left yesterday. Uh, so we got to explore uh, all Montreal. We went up into uh, the mountains and we, we biked up Mount Royal. And then it poured on the way down. Nice. <laughs> the, the, the ironic thing was I tweeted after I had my shirt off because I always had my shirt off. Uh, <laughs> that it rained and there was a rainbow and I said, Montreal said, hi, gay. And then Montreal <laughs> retweeted me, hi, gay. <laughs> so it's been great. Thank you, Montreal. <laughs> you know what? Uh, like, I've been following you for a while because I'm a big fan of the NWA. And so, like, I, I was having, like, these little mark-out moments following you on social media. It's like, oh, he's at the mountain. This is absolutely <laughs> Oh, well. Uh, Were you going to go chase him up the mountain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you, that mountain is long. And I, I, you, okay. It's, like, deceiving. Like, you get to one point, you're like, there it is. Why is there a lake here? Here at the top of the mountain, and they're like, "That's not the top." And then you oh, keep God. going, and they get to the top, and there's like this big fortress. And I was like, "Oh, this is awesome!" <laughs> and then you remember, then you have to go down. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and you're saying it's your first time here in Montreal, Danny? Yeah, it is. Not my first time in Canada, but my first time in Montreal. Yeah. So, oh. doing a little bit of exploring. I've been taken to this bar and one other bar yesterday. <laughs> that was cool. A lot of bars a lot in of Montreal. Bars, yeah. <laughs> what I'm was not the other a big bar? Drinker, but Bars are cool. You know. uh, right it's on. fun vibe. So, <laughs> so Sunny Arpero, have you ever wrestled in Montreal? I have. Yeah? Yeah. Where, where have you, you wrestled? You haven't, though? I have never got to wrestle. So I was supposed to wrestle one time and uh, conflict with my travel to Japan. I wasn't able to be able to make it to Montreal. The fans are awesome here. Oh, yeah. I wrestled at Bar 99. Like okay. Yeah. Okay. Where, wait, where's that? Where's that? I don't know that one. I just know that's what it's called. No, <laughs> <laughs> the wrong we don't know where we. Yeah, yeah. I just know it's called Barney Nine. It was for LDDC. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it was a couple of years ago. Very it's good. been a while since I wrestled here, but I love it. Okay. And Roy, how about you and Montreal? I've never wrestled here. No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never had. You should do it. Yeah, really, no, 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 really no. it's really fun, and Bar 99 yeah, is where to go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Give it the old college try and, and die a quick death. Um, yeah, you know, I, I love Montreal. I mean, I've been coming here for Fantasia since, like, the late 90s. And um, I this festival, for me, this is more like a hometown premiere. A lot of ways over Toronto because of my connection to the festival and everybody in, in this amazing city. So I'm really excited for the screening tonight and I'm also ex extremely excited to have three fantastic friends who are in the film and, uh, and I just adore all of them. So. It's uh, going to be a special night. I'm looking forward to the premiere. I'm looking forward to it as well. It's like like you said, happening tonight and as well as Thursday. I'm going to be at tonight's screening. Um, I want to thank everyone who's joining us right now over on twitch.tv slash lovewrestlingca. We're going to be taking your questions in just a little while, so start thinking about what you want to ask Sunny, ask Pero, ask Danny, ask Rye. And, uh, but first, I'm going to keep chit-chatting with my new friends here. Um, so yeah. 
out in the ring, you've seen uh, like a few production delays, of course, like the pandemic being one of the biggest ones. How does it feel now that it's out in the world now? It's uh, it was it was nice to get it up on a on a big screen. Um, I've never been more terrified, and I think every time I show a film, it's terrifying because I never know what it's going to look like on the screen. And I'm thinking, okay, so please don't let the sound go out of sync. Please don't let the color go out. Please don't shut off in the middle of my screening. And I'm sitting there, and of course, I take my usual seat, which is usually right on an aisle towards the door, as I need to sit there because I'm just terrified at that point. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I, I made it through Unscathed, the first screening publicly in Toronto when we won. And so I was that was cool. And then this one is equally kind of, you know, because these three beautiful people uh, to my uh, my left. Well, I'm have beautiful, beautiful, but... Oh, <laughs> yes, you like, are. Sonny and Danny got the beautiful down. I don't know. You got some I'm a little bit grizzled here. You got some beauty, too, though. Don't, don't worry about that. And they're just beautiful human beings, and and they haven't seen the film yet, so it's just their first chance. They wanted to wait to see it with an audience. Uh, I offered, I offered, certainly offered the opportunity, and I was, you know, thrilled that they wanted to wait. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's it's exciting. It's exciting to. I'm going to be watching to see what they're thinking from probably a little back behind on the aisle. <laughs> a couple aisles peeking I might over just, at the I right might, moments. I may just have to take off and go have a, have a shot in the middle of the screen and come back, but it's, I think I'll make it through a pretty unscathed. I mean, we're also excited that, you know, uh, Pat Patterson's biographer, Bertrand Bear will be here, and uh, Pat LaProd, who's an amazing uh, women's wrestling historian, and they're just, and they wrote, both wrote the incredible Andre the Giant biography together. Um, so it's very cool that they're going to be here, and our producer Darren Dean, who is an iconic independent American film producer, produced Tangerine, the Florida Project, and then a shout out to a um, uh, person we've we've had on the show before, uh, Brad Webb, our editor producer, who, without an amazing, incredible editor, who had to go through ninety five hours of footage to wow. get to that point, along with me, um, has lived with this film. It is probably, I would say, the outside of the amazing people in it is the best friend any film will ever have is your editor and uh, and Brad just goes above and beyond he's the coolest and uh, a lovely guy and uh, we've still never met in person because of the <laughs> pandemic uh, we're meeting in San Jose at the US premiere in San what if you hate him? West. Oh, yeah, what yeah. Right. oh listen <laughs> we, don't, we don't actually hate each other uh, we, we, we talk we talk on we talk online like I'd say like you know at least five hours a week just because we've had to and when at the height of the editing I mean we were we were on the, we were easily talking 25 hours a week in terms of going through footage wow. and how we edited stuff and where we were finding things and what we were cutting out with those uh, mentioned delays that we were talking about like do you anticipate uh, I'm asking the, the, the talent in this one uh, looking back at like earlier stages of your career and having like a bit of a retrospective about those moments so they could go first. Yeah, I, okay, this is your question. I'm really bad at why. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're the one who makes explain that. I should be better at panels. I, I do apologize. <laughs> so a lot a lot has changed in five years. Uh, who we are as people have changed in five years. Yes. Uh, Sonny's pronouns have changed. Yes. Um, Danny has come out in the five yeah, years. Right. <laughs> um, uh, from me being terrified to now understanding how why people before didn't come out you know the 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 the, why there is positives the negatives that we go through daily now the what homophobia really is because people assume homophobia is like you just yell a, a, a slur on the street it's not homophobia is deeply embedded in people whether they know it or not whether they're trying to be homophobic or not because uh, the straight dogmas they grow up with are taught to them from a very young age so when things are new to them it makes them feel very uncomfortable and I thought that when I first came out that nothing would change because to me nothing changed I, I just told you who I really was uh, but in wrestling I went from winning all my matches to losing all my matches and it wasn't like brought up it wasn't like I said I don't think they were doing it purposely but there was like comments saying that well people need to feel bad for you I'm, or they need to care for you more and I was like why are they going to care for me I'm like 300, I'm 320 pounds 6'4 and I murder people <laughs> I was like that's like oh Jason just killed all those people but he's gay we feel bad for him <laughs> like so like 
the, the perceptions that promoters and people had of what gay is and the stereotypes that we've had to fight over the five years have changed since it came out. And plus with the pandemic, the pandemic changed everything for everybody. Uh, it allowed people, why there was positives, where it allowed independent wrestlers to become more creative and us having to get more entrenched with fans um, be over social media. It also allowed people that were, their homophobia and their racism and all that came forward because they were allowed to speak without uh, consequence. And over two year period, two to three year period, you get more and more confident under those feelings. Mm -hmm. So now you bring them into public now that we're back in public. So now we've had to deal with a lot of that, especially in the United States with a very large uh, anti-LGBTQ movement moving right now forward in all of entertainment, sports, and television. So from five years ago where everything was great for us and we a safe place to start coming out, it's reverted back to where 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 we started from and and, and not but it's in different levels it's not like because the younger generation new, new struggles, yeah, new, struggles. New, struggle, sure. new struggles new struggles for something that we didn't perceive were, was going to be a struggle right because nobody perceived a pandemic to happen no yeah so for for me that would be what what really is the five-year difference sure. from the that yeah let's turn to danny um, yeah, I mean, I can't believe it's been five years, but yeah, that's pretty crazy. But like when I uh, originally like had come out, I guess I came out to my mom first, and then with the documentary, I kind of brought it into there. After that, and um, she's probably gonna find out a lot more like about me through that and how emotional it was. Like, granted, I did cry telling her and everything, but like it was just uh, there's a lot of different struggles like he said that we have to like overcome and I didn't know what I was getting myself into I was just like okay now there's a weight lifted off of my shoulders mm -hmm. and I can just present myself a lot more comfortably than I was before so like you know I can wear rainbows like <laughs> you know I didn't wear them before I was just a supportive friend before you know but now it's like I'm a part of the community and I feel a lot more comfortable with it and it's not like I was trying to get in the community to like make money moves or anything like that or like something to promote myself more or you know take advantage of that it's just who i was and i needed to express it and now i feel like a lot just a lot more free you know so just a lot of different things and and sunny so yeah throughout the record um the filming process i went from lucha underground to AEW. um definitely like I've even started to embrace more of myself as well like I, like he said my pronouns have been more open, I'm open to all of them, um, she, he, and they, um, I'm no longer in my relationship anymore, I'm still really good friends with Killian, and you'll see that in the film, I talked about him briefly, I don't know how much, what just edited out and what's not, but okay, I'm still wearing his shirt, and we're still really good friends, um, yeah, no, just so much has changed, like, like they said, and, uh, I can't believe it has been five years, yeah, that's but, insane. Um, so, so I thought it was like two, almost five, it was two for you, Oh. Um, but it's it's been a long journey uh, because throughout the whole process of the yeah, film. Because yeah. right. we think back to the first interview with Scott Sergeant Dixon McEwen because he was the one who lived in Ontario, Canada. So I could go oh, to that 2017, 2017, yeah. and then 2018 was then it was Poyo, Mike, and Effie, and then we were able to connect. But you were on Lucha at that point. Yes. So then and then after that was Ashton AC. Billy, because it just became kind of a almost a domino effect of oh now we're meeting. It was just funny. growing. It was growing mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and expanding. And as we were as humans as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was exactly. just all growing. Yeah. I mean, literally for me, I mean, I grew <laughs> as a human in in, in the great ways. So, <laughs> yeah. it, it, listen, I'm fully embracing my little Caesar's body. And I, <laughs> I know, I know what happened during the, the pandemic, and I was fully, you know, I, I will give them a plug, and so responsible for the butt that I have today. <laughs> so, so if you want a big butt, Little Caesars, little little Caesar's, Caesar's hot fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, sponsor Out of the Ring, Little Caesars, will yes. plug you every time. Top ready. I'm just super excited that it's like, because even though a lot has changed, you'll be able to see what we were going through at that time in our lives, at right. that point in our lives. Mm -hmm. So up until those points, you'll, you'll see what we were going through, what we were dealing with, what we were feeling, the, the highs and the lows. I got married <laughs> during yeah, that right. time. Yeah. I got, so I got married, and three days later, the world stopped. Yeah. <laughs> so ironically, 
quick gay marriage did in the world. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so. But specifically your well, mine, marriage. mine, mine. Because it was a really gay because I mean, it was a really gay marriage. Yeah, you know, we were really both gay and we got married and then yeah. <laughs> we we spent a year uh, for a honeymoon in our house. It was great. <laughs> Uh, now, Roy, uh, I had asked you about the other festivals you've been attending, and you, you already touched upon one, and forgive me, there's a lapse in my notes here, because uh, I took I read this text just before we went into the interview, but you won an award at the recent festival. Yeah. Yes. So we world premiered at uh, Inside yeah. Out, Toronto's 2S LGBTQ Plus Film Festival, uh, which was uh, the, um, one of the longest running LGBTQ film festivals in the world, and the number three festival in North America, and we won Best Canadian Feature. Yeah. And you know, I mean, and we, we were we were struggling to get an audience because the time slots and they were still adhering to pandemic issues. So we had fifty percent capacity. We had an afternoon screening, and then all of a sudden, I get an email at around twelve o'clock the day of the screening, and I'm stressing out. I'm already stressing out because I do that <laughs> very very well. Um, it's my nature to just tear my hair out of my head. And they were like, we would want, we want to know if uh, you and Susan Tex Green, who's our legend in the film, that was in town, and um, will you come to the awards? And I'm like, well, I guess we were going to go to the movie. I mean, we, I guess we'll be at the awards. And then they were like trying to doubt me. like, oh, we just need you there. You know, there's nothing big about it. It's just we just want to put bodies in the seats. And then we sat down, and I kind of looked over, and I saw four groupings of people. And we were one of them, and I was like, so I think we might have won something here. I don't know what we won, but we won something because there's nobody else sitting here in this section of the theater at all, and it's just there. So and then they said, uh, and then all of a sudden they said, you know, this looks at, you know, uh, this this film looks at a sport, and I was like, okay, so we're the only athletic film in the in the in the in the lineup. I said, okay, so we won out of twelve features, um, and won best Canadian feature. So. Uh, it was huge, you know, it was a big that. deal and, uh, you know, and it was, you know, it was a little bit of money and uh, some equipment rental and stuff like that and, uh, you know, able to roll that back over to pay for things because we're still paying to finish the film in a lot of ways. I mean, it's, you know, it's done, but we're getting, you know, we're trying to get it out there and then, you know, we, you know, we cover people's expenses and we travel and the festivals do what they can to provide, you know, accommodations, sometimes a rental fee. But that rolls right back into just putting the film out because documentaries are ultimately low-budget passion projects in a lot of ways, especially independent ones. And you know, you know, people kept going, "Oh, I guess you can't wait till you make tons of money." I'm like, I made a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll remind you all at home: remember all those documentaries you watched during the pandemic. Now you're happy that there was self passion projects, huh? Mm -hmm. You would have been watching a lot of something else. The wall, the <laughs> paint dry, right? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So now you're gonna, and now you're gonna get to see it, and you know. But that's the thing: it's just like you know, documentary. It really is a labor of love, much like the. Oh, the performers in the film. This is a labor of love for them. They're their careers, but it's also a love and a passion because, you know, it's not always, you know, it's not millions of dollars, you know, it's 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 a lot of struggle and road and and getting out there and and merch and all of this, you know, self promotion. I mean it's that's what filmmaking is. I mean it, it, there's a lot of crossover in terms of, you know, the way you know the 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 art and performance and uh, entertainment that these amazing athletes put together in what they do and uh, and creation of cinema and that it comes together in this film. I'm, I'm thrilled that it's come together the way it has. Right, I'm going to put you on the spot with this next question, which is actually directed at the talent. How did uh, how did you meet Rai? What were your first impressions of uh, the the good director, Sunny? So I think I met Rai well 2018, right, in yep. Freetown Wrestling. Um, it's for, my first impression is just this man is just super passionate about wrestling and just about his community and you know the, the, our community and you know how we represent you know that in wrestling and I think you know he combined his two passions together and I just saw that immediately so like when he's talking about the film and like the interview process and all that stuff I was just like man this guy is super super passionate and uh, yeah no I was definitely looking forward to it like I said um, in another uh, interview that I'm. Um, I didn't have any hesitations. I was immediately on board with it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah. Danny? 
Um, we didn't even meet until like <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like in person. We met on camera when we were doing the documentary. Um, we were actually just talking about this. Uh, it was what, in the middle of the pandemic, right? I think? Yes, absolutely. And, um, I... and he set everything up. He got me like a camera guy to shoot. We had to book something like in Atlanta, downtown. I had to drive over there. We had this little room. I was set up. He was set up on like a Zoom call, and we just had our interview and did the documentary just like that, just me in a room by myself with him <laughs> on film. So that's kind of how we met, and immediate, I mean, immediately it was totally normal. You know, it was I was able to like open up and express myself, as you see in the documentary. I was crying my eyes out, mm -hmm. and, you know, with all the questions that he was asking me. So, um, but it was I just felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, so and just like yesterday, very sweet meeting, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very really delicate, really, really good sweet, guy. really passionate, um, very caring, very selfless. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. You can just be you. you know? Totally. And Pharaoh. So mine a little different. Uh, I met Ryan because my story had just come out, and he was doing the project. Meanwhile, a lot everybody's messaging me. They're they're oh. Congratulations. I'm like, I didn't win anything, but like, and so he messaged me and he's like, hey, I'm doing this documentary. Meanwhile, uh, WrestleMania is coming up. So, well, and I, at the time, I worked for Evolve and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, well, I'm going to be at WrestleMania. Uh, can you do an interview? I'm going to tell you, at this point, I'm terrible. Like, my story's coming out and it's being reshared. My biggest fear was people knowing I'm gay, and now I'm like, hey, let's do a gay documentary. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I met him, he put me at ease. Um, and uh, from our, like, because I met him when he, the first time, whenever he, he went to interview me. And we didn't have a lot of conversation prior to that. And even through the conversation, I could tell that he was very passionate about the project but also understood history of wrestling. So a lot of times, a lot of documentary makers actually are making it more to make the money than make for the actual, like they're, the they're marketing it rather than actually, let's get the story out. And he was more passionate about asking questions that actually mattered than mm -hmm. ask, asking, if this makes sense, asking the questions that are marketable or asking the questions that really matter. And it's more important to us to ask the questions that really matter than the questions that are maybe more marketable to a, a, a straighter audience. Because sometimes, you know, a lot of these documentaries, even like he'll point out, um, are made for straight audiences. So you, you're, making, uh, you're making it comfortable for them to watch rather than giving them the information they need. Mm. And sometimes it's more important to hear our information and our stories than just sugarcoating it and make it like, you guys were awesome, thanks for coming in. Like, you know, like, thank you for being so nice to us. Like, because that's what people want to hear. Right. He was able to make us feel at ease telling our story w without making it uh, a, a puff piece about you know, us just being open and everybody being so nice and happy and giddy for us. Right. You you all touched upon this earlier about like the new challenges that LGBTQ is facing, uh, specifically in America and in the, in the pro wrestling scene. What do pro wrestling companies need to do right now to make safer spaces for LGBTQ talent? Sonny, can I defer to you first? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I always get put on the spot with these questions. Um, <laughs> I apologize. No worries, that's your job. <laughs> I don't really get it. Um, just continue to let everyone be themselves and their individual selves and let them um, tell their own story because not all of us are the same in any capacity. We're all very different. Um, yeah, I think I'm probably the only gender fluid in wrestling right now. Well, you know, gender fluid trans femme. So it's like, I think instead of like looping me in a box, and which I don't think that my company is doing. I think that there's definitely, you know, that's that's you know a different story. But um, I think yeah, just continue letting every LGBTQ person be themselves and um, not trying to compare them to another person or feel like I have this in my company so I don't need that. Which is that's not that's the you know what I mean? Right. So it's like allow all of us to be our individual selves. Um, there is no limit. There is no oh we don't have room. It's just continue to let us just be us. Yeah. Okay. That 
that part. Like be, <laughs> being being very well articulated, certainly. The the being yourself part, because yeah. you'll be told all day, we want you to be you. You know, just be you. We like you for you. We want you for you. But then they're like, but not really like that. Like mm. if you could change yourself a little bit to fit like what I want you to be instead of what you actually are, what you're presenting to the people. You know, and the fact that everybody's looked at as the same. Like one of my closest friends. I'm not gonna just like drop names or anything. Right, but right, one of my right. closest friends was going somewhere to wrestle, and they didn't. They specifically had a conversation with him to say, "But can you not wear this because we don't want you to be like this other person that we have that's in the community?" And they were, I'm like, well, "You're totally, totally different people. Completely you're different. completely different people." But it's like since we already have one gay person, we don't want you to be the same. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Then you, there's not really any room for them to describe what exactly they mean, except for like putting you in that box. Oh. I felt personally, to, I'm sorry if I go through you, no, I had to like literally prove that I can be, you know, like a badass, like super tough, like just like my male counterparts and my cisgender male counterparts. Um, yeah, and it's just like, they, because they assume like because you're this way, you know, that you can't be tough and exciting and put on great five-star mm-hmm. matches. And that's not true. Yeah, absolutely. They just put you in a box. Mm-hmm. Which is unfortunate, but it happens to a lot of people. And you know, the 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 best thing that they could do is just probably to ask everyone. Like just just ask us, like what we want to do, what we want to present for you. You know, instead of saying this is what you're gonna do, instead of asking, just ask. So, what a lot of people don't understand. For a lot of us, we're the first people in a lot of. There isn't a lot of LGBTQ talent in a locker room. So, you know, and we don't, like what Danny said, is they'll ask you to um, fit into a certain box because our straight counterparts are very good at stereotyping and everything has to, I I don't know if it, and I'm not saying that because I remember I was pretend straight for a very long time so I totally understand that w- what their thought process is but things have to fit in a little box and make sense to them not thinking that there's a lot of people like us that this makes sense to they understand this and so we're in the process right now of our own straight counterparts for better or worse, are learning because LGBTQ stuff is never taught to them. So they know nothing about us and we know nothing about uh, them. So when we go to the locker room, we spend most of our time explaining how to perceive us. Mm. And we're still at that level now. What we really want is to be performers. That's why we got in the business. We're all fans. You don't become a pro wrestler unless you were a fan. Like this, this you want to, you love pro wrestling, just like you guys love pro wrestling. And you know, we just want to be able to go to work and perform of who we are, and and, and what we want to pr- our image that we want to perceive. And so, a lot of the times, it's like, especially with me, when I came in, they're not used to a gay badass, they they because it's never been perceived ever on television. Sure, everything that you've ever seen. I, in fact, it's one of the major reasons to get a little dark that I did try to attempt to kill myself. Because I felt alone and I had no visible representation of me on television. Because what you don't understand, growing up, you watch sports, you watch television, you watch media. And if you don't see yourself represented, you think you're weird and alone. And you have to keep these feelings in. So now I I, I was like, there's nobody like me. There, there can't be another gay guy like me. Because all I see... In, in, people forget the first time we ever learned anything gay is from our straight friends. They, they tell us, and then it's negative. It's not positive. So now we don't want to be that and because we want to fit in. It's important when you're little to fit in. But if you see somebody on television like you, a sports athlete that was masculine like me and was able just to be, hey, I'm an athlete, but I'm also gay, it would have changed my whole life. Because what people don't understand about us is Unlike our straight counterparts, our straight counterparts don't have to worry about somebody outing them as straight. Our straight counterparts don't have to wor- ever focus about what happens if we come out, what is going to happen to us, is our career over? Because you, we see these things when athletes do come out, they come out and then their career is over. Or how they're perceived has changed, how they're booked has changed. So 
they're looked at as weaker. In yeah, a way, it, for that, some reason. That, that we're not equal to our counterparts, whereas I'm bigger than most of the people I face. <laughs> like, I'm a former Division One football player. I'm like most of the people I knew were nerds in high school that want to be tough now out of perception of a wrestling, <laughs> telling me that they're stronger than me. I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm like, we could do this the real way or the, the way we're supposed to. I'm like, but I'm going to tell you, you're not going to like the first way. Because I, I, I get a lot from promoters that ask, ask me, uh, what do you do that is gay? What is that? And mean? I was like, well, I beat you up. <laughs> and they're like, well, how's that gay? I go, I'm doing it. It's pretty gay. <laughs> and, and, and that's the perception I want. I have a tag team partner that is totally straight. We have, the, and then they'll always be like, well, why don't you have a crush on your tag team partner? I go, why would I? Go, well, no, he's a shit show. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I love him to death, but that's totally not my type. Like, like, like he's my brother. Yeah. Like I, we're we're close. We go everywhere together. Our business is together. But why be just because I'm gay? The the thing is, us always have. We're gonna go after straight people. I'm gonna tell you this, straight people. I'm gonna say this. We don't want. You. If we hit on you, you are hot. <laughs> like, like, take it as a compliment. In which case, Kevin Nash actually said he loves that. Like, a, he said, if a gay dude's looking at me, he better be nodding up and down. Like, yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> because we're not like like girls. <laughs> like, who, they're gonna like your personality. They're gonna like all this. I'm like, I'm not interested, Bob. Like, so you you need to realize, like, because I always have friends. Because I have a thing, like I told them. If I have to do straight shit with you, sorry about swearing, no, you, have no. to do, you have to do gay stuff with me. So, like, I, if we're on the road and I have to do go out to the bar and do straight stuff, you're going to do gay stuff. <laughs> like, we go on the gay bar, have fun. And I will tell you this, our counterparts, a lot of them love it. They, they come out, they're, they're very supportive of us. It's not, we've learned that it's not them and it's not the fans. It's more of the higher-ups, older generation that doesn't know how to grasp yet. That's something I love about AEW though. Like AEW let Joey and I be a tag team and they let us just be us within that tag team. It was like, I was this black trans femme person and he's just this badass, you know, straight white dude. I love that program. And it was so much fun, wasn't it? Yeah. It was so it much fun didn't last, It didn't last long as, as long as it should have, but um, no, it was great. And we were literally, there was no sexuality entangled in that. We didn't have an entanglement. Um, it was just two friends just enjoying each other, both from Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl, born and raised. And so is he, and so he's, he's a Jersey boy. So we, but we just kind of, that was our connection. Like we both had a, a common goal was to have fun, kick ass in wrestling. And you saw that and you related to that because a lot of people, you know, who are straight, you have a gay best friend, you have a gay mom, brother, sister, auntie, cousin, whatever, children. So it's like, people relate it to that because it was we were both two individuals that you know you could see your in, in yourself or in your best friend it's like yo that's us like or hey like that's that yeah that's you that's you that's you that's me like i'm sunny you're joey like that's us all my best friends are straight i don't really have gay best friends all my friends are straight so they relate to that mm -hmm. they understand that yeah. mm -hmm. it, it's 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 funny because our world has changed and people sometimes don't want to admit it and you said what is the one thing that we do this thing called Big Gay Brunch. The first Big Gay Brunch, I got a little bit of emotional. Not going out there, when I walked into the locker room, it was the first time I saw queer athletes just being so, themselves, so them laughing, the joking, yeah. and feeling comfortable. Oh, That's okay. the level I want to be able to get at in wrestling. So where, 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 And I'm tearing up because... I know what it's like to feel uncomfortable and have to pretend that I'm not uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. right. Because that's a shield that we have to go because we don't, in our real life, if we bring our boyfriend or girlfriend to the bar, into a straight bar, I have to watch out to see who's, who, if I kiss my husband, my husband, who I'm married to, if I kiss him, how is a frat boy or somebody gonna react to that? And we still have to deal with that unlike our straight counterparts that don't understand that about us. So when they approach us with things and we come, we come off a little bit defensive, we come off defensive because we have to be. We, they don't have to be. So it's like a defense mechanism for us is like, hey, you just need to understand is like, 
if I kiss my husband in the middle of a frat party, there's there's a chance that somebody's going to say something. Mm -hmm. And we just want to get to the level, like, in the locker rooms. And it has changed, like Sonny said. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's the benefit to our co-workers and our friends. Yeah, I will say, yeah. being at EW, it really, really is an all-inclusive environment. Um, my co-workers are awesome. And yeah. we don't ever, exactly, she, and Danny can attest that too. Very open. Been, yeah, uh, AEW as a whole, like, the company is awesome. And it comes to, like, you know, embracing each other, you know, all different races, backgrounds, whatever. Like, and we... Um, to get a little more detailed, we even have meetings. How can we make you more comfortable? AW does a lot behind the scenes people don't know about. So we have like Zoom sessions about, um, you know, race topics. Um, even when this did not happen, it was like, how can we make you guys more comfortable? Um, we have emails sent to us when the whole thing, Roe versus Weed, happened. Our company does a very good job of making us feel accepted and comfortable when it comes to like our mental health as well. We have mental health um, sessions as well. So there's so much going on, going on behind the scenes to make us feel comfortable. So I definitely want to say that we, as far as most locker rooms that we be in, like especially AEW, I can for surely say, very very inclusive. And if you're not, somebody's gonna you'll have somebody like John Moxley breathing down your neck. Once <laughs> and you don't want that, you know. So yeah, AEW's awesome in that regard. I love to hear that. Uh, I have one more question. This is going to be directed for Rai before we turn over to our Twitch audience and ask what you, uh, your questions for Sunny, for Danny, for Pero, and for Rai. But my question for Rai is when can the people outside of the festival circuit expect to see out in the ring? It's a very good question because as with independent films and specific, especially independent documentary, uh, the only way we can interest a broadcaster, a streamer, or a platform to take on the film is to play festivals and, and get it seen by people. And then those people hopefully can put pressure upon, you know, because it's, it's as simple as things of putting it in your Netflix queue and putting it in your, you know, uh, putting it on your iTunes requests and stuff like that and ask when it's going to be available. Um, that's, that's exactly what it is. And keep an eye out, you know, off to our social media uh, for festival screenings near you. I mean, we, we are going to have a lot of festival screenings. And we've already been kind of talking about what we can do in for next year around WrestleMania weekend. And being as it's going to be in Hollywood, and we have not had an LA premiere yet, and I have we have a lot of people ready to go in Hollywood who want in LA that want to see. The I film. look great in Hollywood. I'm just <laughs> he, he looks great everywhere. He should be cast. They should all be cast in Hollywood. They should all be working in Hollywood. Uh, well, Sonny, oh, thank you. Very much. Well, right. Danny's Danny. Great. They're all no, you two. Stop. 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 <laughs> but you know, it's just a matter of you know we've got to get it to the audiences, and we've had some incredible supporters, and you know we we are very lucky to also have some really lovely friends who are incredible allies. I mean, I, I can I think of uh, Lita, Amy Dumas, and and Taya Valkyrie, and uh, just you know how much I, you know those people. I mean, uh, Mickey James, uh, Lisa. Dusa, Lisa, Lisa Marie Veron. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, these people have been just so incredible and wonderful. And you know, in Odinson, who's in in the film as well. I mean, you know, not to be, you know, not to, you know, to, you know, leave the men out. But I think we instantly kind of highlight the women because the women knew where these athletes were coming from. They had to fight. I mean, we're in Montreal, home of Lufisto, and the fact that she had to fight the government for the right to wrestle men in this country, mm. and did so for so long and then did it and does it better because she's tougher than most of the fucking guys in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I've wrestled her. She's really tough. <laughs> and I do, I, I, I do want to say like a lot of times too because there's so much that happens in our community and there's so much that goes down that is negative we tend to sometimes forget that there's a lot of positives. Like in this five years we've grown so so much for the better. Um, wrestling has grown, you know, has become better um, in a lot of ways. And there's so many of us now and we're uniting and you know we're bonding and we're on television products. We have first ever's happening. We have people like Nyla Rose, who's doing the first ever trans woman to win a national championship. Uh, from a, 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 she's a signed wrestler on the you know the national platform. And you know there's so many of us. So Darren Young, yes, just one. Darren Young. We have literally so much positive happening as well. But I think you know we highlight the struggles because 
people need to hear about this because even though we are moving, moving forward, there's a lot of stuff that's going on that needs to be addressed and nipped in the bud. So totally, yeah, we want to acknowledge that there is a lot of positive as well. And, and we're really living proof. And the creating was safe spaces. Out. These performers are creating their own safe spaces because when they didn't feel safe, mm -hmm. they decided not only for themselves but also for fans outside of who are fans outside of the performers. Because the performers are first and foremost wrestling fans. Yeah. But there are spaces now where fans who never felt like they could go to a wrestling show yeah. can it go is. to That's a big, wrestling big show. Gay, the big gay brunches. Yeah. I will tell you, the WrestleManias and stuff like that. The open fans that come out where yeah. all, all spectrums from allies yeah. all the way through that I will tell you it tears I, I try to be a tough guy but them because they the craziest them coming up and sharing their stories oh my god you yes. helped us With come out 12 year olds to, are identifying as non-binary and trans-masculine and I'm like oh my god and it's bringing god. in like a new fan base for wrestling like sure. I don't know about you but yeah. we've been stuck in the same fan base of wrestling it, it, from like 20 <laughs> years ago yeah. and I'm tired of those people like I want to see some new faces in the crowd and, and, like we got the same people in the front row every week yeah. like come on and it's you know? teaching parents to be accepting of their Young, young children. Mm -hmm. We, I have a, a trans trans boy, like, and the parents uh, allow, are accepting, and they come to all our shows, mm -hmm. and, and and with big flags and the trans flag and everything, and 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 the now, and it's to see the kid happy, and what people don't understand is this kid sees us, and mm -hmm. sees Sunny and sees. And sees a representation of something they feel connected to. And res the thing about wrestling is, we all grew up feeling connected to something in wrestling. That's why we're here. It draws us in. Wrestling is supposed to represent life. Wrestling is supposed to take risks that nobody else takes. Just like I said in an interview the other day. Like Star Trek. Star Trek put things out way before it's time to show you this is how real life is. You might want to say real life is just this, yeah. but most people, most the world is this. Most of the world isn't one scope of a minority. We're the majority, not the minority. It's just we've been held back for so long and the fans have felt forgotten by wrestling and that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Think about all those when you were a little kid, when Stone Cold's music hit, when Rock's music hit. You're wearing a Royal Rumble hat because why? You enjoy the Royal Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Lawrence and, off camera yeah. over here. And, 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 and Royal Rumble was made by Pat Patterson. Yep. And I'll just lastly say um, you have to raise your kids based on the world that exists today. Yes. Because yes. 1970s doesn't exist anymore. And it's it, not there anymore. It's history, as mm -hmm. we say. So you have to raise your kids, and you have to, um, even with representation, it has to be seen for what the world is today, not for what the world was. Mm -hmm. so, and what it can be exactly. in the future. Because yes. they are the future anyway. Yes. And what it can be. Well, thank you very much. This was Oh, just beautiful conversation, but I would like to defer to our audience on Twitter. And Lawrence, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. If you can pull some interesting questions, feel free to they put them on the screen. They better be interesting. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's done if it's not interesting. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. all just walk out. Yeah. We'll walk out on Twitch. Yeah, we'll just, yeah. Where's going to go? Yeah, bye. Just, just bye. kidding. I'll say. 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 Peril wants like all it? the smoke, y'all. <laughs> so if you want to come to him with the crazy questions, do it. He's there all for it. He's, he will come with the smoke, honey. <laughs> okay, we've got a couple questions from our boss, Spencer Love. Hey, Spencer. Uh, Spenny. Rye, is there anyone in particular you wanted in the film that wasn't able to participate? Pat Patterson. Um, oh, that's a good answer. The yeah. reason was the reason we don't have Pat in the film is. Pat's health was declining, his memory was going, and it didn't feel respectful to shine a light on him and put a camera on him. Uh, and so we're delighted to have Bertrand Bear, who was Pat's biographer, who co-wrote Accepted with Pat. And we, you know, we, I, I engaged with Pat when I saw Pat places. We all, you know, when we had the chance to do so, took that opportunity. Um, to laugh with him and engage with him, but also we knew that his health was declining and it wouldn't have been fair 
to put him on camera in that sense, in that way, you know, because he deserves to be respected and given the dignity. And one of the things I fought for in this film was to make sure that Pat Patterson's legacy also, that we corrected a huge wrong that a lot of people perpetuated about Pat Patterson. And the truth is, is that Pat Patterson was accused of being a child molester, of, of a sexual deviant, and of all of these things. And one of the things I set out was to set that record straight and prove, without a shadow of doubt, that Pat Patterson was smeared. He was wrongfully accused, and we have that in the film. I went out of my way to do that because that man was an amazing human being, and I was able to share time with him in person. And I know that everybody who's seen him, and we have to thank him because he's one of those who paved the way and changed it. And while he, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, was hiding in plain sight, we can't deny what Pat and his and his amazing partner, Louie, represent for this community and what they do, and he changed it. So I wish we could have had Pat at a time uh, when Pat could have been able to be actively more engaged and in better health. Uh, but I do feel like he's here in the film. He's he's one of the heart. He's definitely one of the main, um, you know, arteries of this film, and, mm -hmm. that, and, and at a heart of the film. And um, thank goodness we have Bertrand, who spent five years with him writing that book. And um, you know, and I just you know, it would have been really lovely to have been able to have have Pat's voice uh, physically there. And I know Bertrand just recently tweeted and said. How honored it would have been, Pat would have been to just even be here mm. for us tonight. So, and, he, and you know, and, and he is here. He really is. I mean, he's in all of these performers. He's in any fan who appreciates and understands that. And, um, you know, love Pat a lot. Do we have any other? Uh, we have one more from Spencer here. Another from Spencer? Uh, yeah. Where could the wrestling community still stand to improve when it comes to the treatment of LGBTQIA individuals? Working the wrestling community to improve? improve? Yeah. Uh, yeah, specifically yeah. the fans or? Uh, so well, yes, I guess the, the fans. The community, are, okay, yeah. pardon me. What can the fans do to improve? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah the community is a whole. Sorry, I've uh, derailed the uh, the structure of this question with my. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> there are two different questions. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The right question. Yeah, apologies. Uh, Lawrence, one more time. Where could this wrestling community still stand to improve when it comes to the treatment of LGBTQIA plus individuals? I'm just going to talk about the fans. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I guess us. Um, that's not a tough one. Because we all get negative. So uh, as wrestlers in general, you're going to get negative yeah. stuff yeah. That, that comes in. Um, Anyone in show business will. You but know, my, my, my thing is, don't compare us. Yeah. We're not the same athlete. I, I'll bring up this. It happens a lot. And we will speak his name. Uh, Jim compares us a lot. We are totally different athletes. We bring totally. totally different things to the table. Danny brings something totally different than both me and Sonny. And just anyone. We're and, just people. And we've gotten into this standard in wrestling that we all have to be a mimic of the mimic of the mimic of the mimic. Which is sadly kind of spilled over into our own communities because it caused a lot of like self-hatred and you know um, a lot of times too people who are, are other femmes or other uh, trans femmes or whatever they feel like you're making a mockery and it's like no I'm just being who I am authentically, authentically but when you're on, on a major platform you know, it's hard for them to kind of like accept that because they're so used to being told that that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, yeah, allow us to all just be us authentically, it, it, genuinely. Because we, 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 bring, we bring something to the all. Wrestling's only good when it's diverse. You can't have good stories unless you have diversity because you can't have real conflict if it's just the same person versus the same person. The feud between me and Effie were because we are actually polar opposite people. Yes. Why we might get along in real life, we're frenemies. Mm -hmm. we're, hands down. We're, we're, me and him are frenemies. Okay. And, but we have a natural feud with one another. And I don't think it's like the fans necessarily that would have to do anything different. I think it's Support just the booking. Us. Sure. You know? you, like you, just book us like normal. And, 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 and the book us like gay versus gay, yeah. you know? And, and, and that's the thing is 
you want if you want to see change in wrestling all in general, whether it's gay, straight, or anything. Support independent wrestling. Go to independent wrestling shows. Yeah. Because independent wrestling, buy our merch. Because that's what changes wrestling. Mm-hmm. And when you support us as a wrestling community and not just jump in as the whole, listen, we understand that there's certain things you're not going to like. But that's the cool thing about independent wrestling. It's like music or like TV. It's a or like flavor. A, you, mm-hmm. you don't have to like everything. Some people don't like Marvel films, but a lot of people do. Some people would rather a DC film. A lot of people don't. But it doesn't matter. It's something for everyone. Yeah. And the more you support, the more you go out and support your local independent show, it's the circus. There's going to be something there you like. Trust me, not everything on the show is going to be something you don't like. Wrestling isn't the same match over and over again. It's a unique circus. They have lions, tigers, and bears. And, like, <laughs> and bears. <laughs> and, 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 you know, oh I, I, I find myself, I watch a lot of independent wrestling more now than I do ever. And ironically, my friends are all over television. And I try to catch their matches here and there. But I like watching the younger kids because the excitement is still there. So if you, it's like college, like the American terminology here. NFL and college football are totally different things. But those college players are going to be the people you cheer in the NFL. The energy at a college game is totally different than the energy at an NFL game. Just like independent wrestling. Yeah. The passion of an independent wrestling crowd is totally different than a passion of going to a regular wrestling mm-hmm. show. Because the regular wrestling show is more TV, more streamlined, more clean. The independent show, you can get wild, you can get crazy, and you can say what you want. And we want you to. Also, you're allowed to boo gay wrestlers. <laughs> it is not homophobic. Yeah. If I'm a bad guy, boo me. I you're, want you to boo me. You're booing the character, not the gender yeah. identity or the sexuality. Uh, you're, my, booing the ide- you're booing the character of the wrestler, we want, not, who, not that, their identity. You know what? That's what I really want to change. Yeah. We, we aren't... All like we're characters just like the characters that yeah. straight people play. Mm-hmm. The problem we're having is people are afraid. Our wrestling gimmick is not a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Our wrestling gimmick is that she's a mean girl. So do you like the mean girl aesthetic or do you not? Yeah. So yeah. you boo the mean girl aesthetic or you cheer it. I boo her every chance yeah. I get. I'm the beautiful <laughs> badass. Chance. I'm the concrete rose. I combine that together because there's I'm sweet and I'm spicy. Do you like that or do you don't? You know, you're a fan of that or you're not. I yeah. literally cost Luke Hawks the Crockett Cup. You can boo me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, I'm not a good guy. I will beat you up. That's what I do. I don't, you don't need to feel bad for me. There isn't this thing where, like, because we've seen this, tra- like, people are learning now. And mm-hmm. that, yes, we might be open athletes, but we want to be treated like our straight counterparts' characters are treated. If we're, If you don't like something... You can boo that. We're not going to take offense. Now, don't scream fag at me. And like, like, that's derogatory to the people surrounding you. Absolutely. Now, that's not going to hurt my feelings because sticks and stones don't break my bones. But <laughs> and names will never hurt me. Whips uh, and chains excite <laughs> Whips and chains. Well, Especially since I'm a I wear chains. I've been open since I was like nine years old, eight or nine years old. So that is nothing to me. Yeah, so, but. I haven't heard it all, trust me. So, <laughs> so, I get mad for them. <laughs> but be, be, <laughs> res- like, what? be respectful for the people around you. You don't know what little kid sees that. That's yeah. That's what hurts that me too. more than the mm. words to me. Yeah. Because I know that you know, I feel bad for these people that are raising children and, and seeing these stuff, and for the kid, for their kids, and for the, the generations to come. Because you're continuously to put this poison, you know, out there when it's like we should be going in the opposite direction. Why are we going backwards? Mm-hmm. These children don't know. And that's uh, what I mean. To hate. They don't know hate. Yeah. They're, not, they're taught hate. It, it, they're being I taught mean, that. Your, your co-worker's daughter, you're their favorite wrestler, Sonny. I mean, they yes, love you. Dax Harwood. Dax Harwood's yeah. daughter. Zara Finley. I'm, she, listen. <laughs> talk about the biggest fans. She is mine and Ruby's biggest fan. So, no. It's... My husband... That's not even now. ...is a major fan. <laughs> like, my husband boos me. Like, <laughs> but if Sonny is to come out, oh, 
Yeah, but, but Finley, Sunny can do no wrong. Finley right. is like eight years old, and she Finley. just calls me she, and she, you know, David allows. I'm sorry, Dax allows her to call, you know, me whatever she wants, and she's just like, yeah, I love her, I love her outfits and stuff like that, and like I just feel like wow, like he's teaching his child to be loving and caring and embrace, you know, whoever and whatever. I'm talking to this camera. Really Don't worry about <laughs> you know it. I mean? Don't worry but, yeah, about it. Yeah, I I love that we have, and that that's. It makes my heart just so warm knowing that our generations to come is like there's going to be a lot of people teaching you know what they you know what they're supposed to be teaching from a long a long time ago old generations I mean y'all to I don't know what happened with there but let's keep, <laughs> keep moving forward. It, it's the the little kids that come dressed as me like Aww. like like it, it, like <laughs> it's because. It's it's still it's cool. Like me and my tag partner look cool. <laughs> like whether you want to say it or not, we're two big guys that look like a modern day mix of Axe and uh, Axe and Smash and the Road Warriors yeah, put together. Yeah. And we look cool coming out, and we have spray paint. And little kids bring spray paint, the cake spray paint, and spray themselves. And they love this. We like. Why would you take something away that causes causes your children joy, yeah. mm -hmm. just to be because you don't understand it? They understand it just fine. They get and it. That's <laughs> just try. Like yeah. our our characters are not our sexuality. That's the biggest yeah. thing too. Because I always get that. It's like Sunny. Why do you consistently make you know your sexuality a thing? I don't. You guys do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ju I'm just trying to be me. Yeah. Since when have you seen that? Yeah. I haven't. I only do that because this is what they embrace. If my company is embracing Pride Month and they're putting me there and this is what we're talking about, this is what we're talking about, you know what I mean? So I'm only embracing what's, what's already out there and what I'm representing for others. A sunny Kiss is just Sunny Kiss. Yeah. And I do nothing at all sexual. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, I, like, I put people through tables like if you get turned on by that that is your kink not mine <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 i just I, I'm happen like, to be because you know, i've been told hot. before by multiple <laughs> i've been told by four multiple wrestlers they're like why do you post uh all that you post a lot of gay stuff on social media and i had to think to myself what, what do i post that's gay and i'm like your husband and then, then i was then i that's realized it. it was pictures of my husband and because the perception they were taught was this is something that isn't accepted. Whereas our straight powder of ours can post pictures of their couples, that post pictures, Matt's posting pictures on like the beach with the belt, with the like uh, Chelsea swimming, like, like that's totally acceptable because they grew up in the 80s where Miss Elizabeth and all that. Yeah. They just haven't had the storyline yet, guys. Like, <laughs> once you expose them to it, they'll get it. Yeah. Like, it won't be gay stuff. Like, we're all just, we're all just the same thing. Like, whether you're straight, you know, gay, trans, whatever, like, you're going to, like, post like any other normal human being would. Occasionally, your pictures are going to be bikini pics. You're going to post your partners. Like, it's all just normal shit. Y'all are making it a big deal. Not yeah. like, <laughs> you know, it's all, we're all just trying to be normal, our own normal selves. And if that's a problem for you, then hey. That, that's their, that, but that's their problem. We're living in 2022. This is the world that we live in today. Yeah. Gay people exist. <laughs> Trans people exist. There's, Lesbians there's exist. There's billions. Exist. There's billions of us. Yes, and we we exist in all different kinds of personalities and different origins mm -hmm. and where we're from and different dialects and personalities and life choices. We're all just very different. And we're and that's, not here that's, to force it down your throat at either. all. Y'all are the ones who make it. You know, <laughs> us seem like we're doing it. We're not doing that. We're not associating sexuality with sex. Mm -hmm. Right. And, or gender you know, identities with sex, y'all are. I saw you shut down some, I don't know, MMA fighter who said something to that effect oh, uh, a few weeks yeah. ago. That just, that it popped me. I thought, I thought you handled that very eloquently. Yeah, it was, it was just interesting to me. Like, you know, you're saying that we don't need a month. Like, yeah. you know, we don't need a month to talk about butt sex is what he, what he said, I think. Something akin to that, yeah. Something really like, crass. Uh, and let me so tell you, you I, do, I, I do it 12 months a year, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm married. I, if you think that that's what it is, you clearly need to be educated. Uh -huh. Because yeah. butt sex All is the least <laughs> yeah. of our thoughts. I did, I did say month. that I want to find out when butt sex month is. Because I'm looking for a holiday to extend it and add my schedule. I was like, that's wait. Because if butt sex it's, month is, is coming up, the least of our pride month, was June. You know, when pride month comes around, yeah. that, 
because obviously that is a part of my yeah. lens. But, but when part one comes around, it's not what we're thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, cause, it's not what we're thinking about in science. Right. This is what I tell people when we get that pride question a lot. We're not we're not prideful for being gay. We're proud because we accepted who we were and we're finally yeah. living our life. You got to live your life yeah. from the day you were born. So be lucky there's no such a thing as a great pride. Because you, had, you got to accept yourself for, and you didn't have to go through everything we went through. Everything that we were put through. Every negative comment. Everything that, oh, gay. Oh, if you look at your nails this way, you're gay. And that's you're gay. a thing too. Oh, if you wear an earring on one a yeah. certain ear, you're but gay. no, like that was a thing. Pride yeah, came about because straight people made being gay a big deal. <laughs> so that's why pride exists. We didn't make it a big deal. <laughs> we just wanted to exist. People back then, you know, the Stonewall riots and stuff like that happened because straight people had a problem. I'm not gonna say all straight people, but you know, sure. Yes, people had problems with LGBTQ people. So that's why it exists. If, if it wasn't such a thing back then... If you, if you guys didn't make such a big deal about yeah, it, we wouldn't have to do a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thank you, I guess, yeah. for making yeah. a great video. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, oh, in, in a perfect world, well, I mean, you're not wrong on that. I mean, in a perfect yeah. world, we shouldn't be having to make these, tell these stories in a lot no, of ways in that sense. Um, you know, and it, you know, but, you know, the, but the problem is, is we live in a, we live in a world where we still have to. And uh, and it's important we have to. And there's nothing wrong with remembering the histories of things, but yeah. the fact that this film is also based on a lot of struggle and, and hurt and pain, and that is the unfortunate part of the story. The fortunate part of the story is that we do have people like Mike and Danny and Sonny who exist and are making this world better and safer for everybody just by being who they are That's and the living their life. So every photo that Mike posts with the love of his life is no different than the photos of other friends of ours posting the loves of their life, regardless, you know, when my friends, you and know, when, when my friends Josh and Jade, <laughs> my friend, when my friends Josh and Jade post photos of them together with their family, it's no different than anybody else posting a photo of somebody with their family, other than the you know, the the gender roles and um, relationships and that that are different and the, who people are and that's it. It's There's no difference, you know. It's, it's we've got to get to a point where, you know, just be happy that somebody is happy and posting a photo oh, yeah. about love. Love, you know, we keep repeating this over and over again. Love is love is love is love. And at the end of the day, all we keep saying is that we just want people to just be better. A little more open-minded. And, and it's not just us or loving. our community. It's like there's a lot of problems these days. There's problems with religion, all this kind of just stuff. Just respect each just other. Just respect each other, yeah. Like, these it's are the not thing, hard. We all <laughs> gotta live together on the same earth. These are the things we're earth. taught we in don't kindergarten. Yeah. Don't call people names. Mm -hmm. Be nice to someone. Call them, you know. Don't be rude. These are Ask things for we permission. Keep, and also, not to mind your business. If you yeah. don't, if you're not a fan of that, then don't do it. You got yeah. a fan. You got a problem with abortion? Yeah. Don't have one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you got a problem with gays? Don't <laughs> get married. Don't get married to a guy. Then don't get married <laughs> to a girl. Whatever. Yeah. 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 You it's, don't like gay marriage? Don't, don't marry don't. somebody who's that, gay. That's yeah. always, but that's always been my thing. It's like, why do you want us to be straight so bad? Why do you want us to be straight? First of all, I'm going to tell you something about gay men. We are going to steal your girl. <laughs> you are not going to have any options because the only two options is they're going to want to be either with a girl or with me. <laughs> I'm like, because I, I work out, I have a great job, and I'm highly educated, and I understand her and respect her. And I don't want to sleep with her, so. <laughs> so and your motive is not just... And we're going to do fun things. <laughs> Adventures. Well, friends, I could pick your brains for hours on end, uh, but... I know you have a busy night ahead of you, yes. and uh, the good people at Brutopia have afforded us a lot of floor space for a considerable amount of time. I want to thank you all once again and give you the opportunity to let the audience know where to follow you on social media. Roy, I'll start with you. Uh, you can follow Out in the Ring on Twitter at Out in the Ring and on Instagram at Out in the Ring Doc. Those are the two best places to find out more about the film. We keep very active on those social media spaces. And we're in the process right now setting up uh, a new website, which we'll have, and we'll also make available some merch at some point as well. Bye. 
Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Pero underscore. I am very active on there. Uh, I love to debate and talk, and uh, any questions you have, always hit me up. And if you want to look at sweaty gym selfies of me doing CrossFit, you can go on Instagram at Pero49. Uh, you, I'm always available. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Danny Jordan, J O R D Y N, is how you spell that. And then Instagram is just at Danny J. So I also have an OnlyFans now. Oh, hey. No nudes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mike. I don't want to see who I just said. Hiya. You can find me at SunnyKissXO. That's on both Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook as well. Um, and you can also find me on AW Dark at 76 Central on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And uh, buy my merch too. You yeah. Wrestlingtees.com slash SunnyKiss. Yeah, and, buy my merch. And Brand, Ar- merch. Brand Army. Cameos. And, and OnlyFans. Yeah, or cameos. You know, I don't have a cameo, but I'll do it on OnlyFans. Subscribe. Yes, cameo. Oh my god, all yeah. that. Yeah. If you want me to insult Subscribe. you personally, mm-hmm. I'm totally down. I'll be nice to you, but yeah, you know, come. She has the whole book. <laughs> Brand army and OnlyFans. So go get your yes. Two best subscriptions you'll ever have. Yes. <laughs> and and with that, thanks to everyone who tuned in. Thank you to for, to Lawrence for producing this live episode. And uh, yeah, Smart and Friends will be back in the coming weeks. Till then, friends.